What's up guys, Barry Game here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we are doing another account tune-up for one of our newest tier 3 warrior subs, and that is PRH. So, I literally have not looked at the account just yet. I've been warned though, I've been warned. There are potential mistakes of too many projects going on, so we're gonna have to see what's happening. Of course, you see everybody in chat just doing some nice little emote spam for me. Nice. Hold the emotes, guys, hold the emotes. But... Let's take a look, see what's going on. We're also going to try to help with, I believe, Forest Sealand. But let's take a look at the heroes. Ah, you know, I don't... I mean, yes, they are not fully leveled up, but this is much better, much better than Wednesday's account tune-up we did for Jesper, where it was like two full lines of 10 stars and nine stars that were ones you don't want to build. This isn't too bad. This really, really is not that bad. Um, the heroes that you're building are all very solid. The Horus is debatable if you actually need to. You guys, I cannot take you anywhere, can I? I can't take you anywhere. I'm just going to have to disable it. That's all. That's all I'm going to have to do. See what happens? You get punished. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, the heroes you are building are pretty good. The Aspen, uh, a little debatable whether I'd build him. The Penny is going to start losing usefulness very, very much. Um, Horus... Kind of a late project, but it does sound like you are building him to do sea land. So before we jump into the heroes too much, we should probably look at the sea land. Yes, we got light done. Fortress is really, <clears throat> really close. Yeah, you just don't have the support to go along with it. <clears throat> Honestly, if you were to try to push this, what I would do is get energy artifacts on like four fire fist, the three star hero. Uh, where are you? This man right here with artifact, with, uh, energy artifacts. You might be able to do it with what you have already. Uh, in Sealand, what else do we got? Forest should be pretty close to doable here at 1820. That's what I would expect. Yeah, you need to get that horse up higher. But the biggest issue you're going to have, uh, Shadow Sealand is not going to be very easily doable right now because you have all your copies into one ticks. What you need is either an E5 Ithaqua or an E5 Horus. Guy Jumper, I was just talking about you. More gifted subs. Thank you so much, man. Make sure you guys say thank you if you got that sub. Uh, but you, what you need for Shadow Sea Land is like an E5 Horus and then five baby ticks. Not an upgraded one. But, hey, I mean, it's not bad if you do have the E2 ticks. What I would do if you really want to get Sea Land done is put it on pause. Don't go for those copy. Don't go for building him further until the horse is done. And then use the rest of your five-star versions of ticks in Sealand. And then once you have Sealand 20 done, then continue building up the ticks. Um, once you get Sealand done as well in Shadow, I would probably almost instantly regress Horace. It's just not needed on your account whatsoever. Uh, the Penny is kind of a similar situation. It's just not needed. Eventually, you just get rid of the Penny completely. Almost the same exact thing. You can literally say the same thing in dark. I mean, the Aspen is, again, just not really necessary. Um, the Belrain, she's losing her usefulness, but she is still pretty decent. Um, could be swap material in the future. You never know. We'll have to see. You want to swap Penny after Sealand? Yeah, swapping out Penny for something like Sherlock copies or a Nosuke or something like that would be pretty solid as well. Or just a straight regress. Um yeah, either or. Let's take a look at the artifacts and gear setup. Uh, I like that. I like that. That is a good setup there. Not a fan of the Antlers Cane. Not a fan. What I would do is run a very deep... Honestly, even just like a Plate of Courageous Fearless Armor. Um, That's not going to do that much for an Ada, honestly. And I would be tempted to run Split Gear if you have the extra 6-star gear. I would run her more like this right here if it was my option. If it was my choice, I would do that right there for her. Um, speed HP is good. Run speed enables. Yeah, that, that's kind of a better setup for Ada in my opinion. Bell Rain is fine. doesn't really matter how you run a Bell Rain. It should be pretty decent. Um, Harry is a solid setup here. I like that. Speed HP. Usually you want speed attack. HP is not as important, but running energy is a solid pickup there. 
looks good on the Amon Ra. Again, like I said, on some of these other heroes like this, you might be better off if you have the extra gear running a split gear setup for more HP just to make sure they can live longer. Um, Garuda, that is looking very solid. I love that Garuda right there. Second Garuda, that's a solid pickup. I would probably run Echo of Death <clears throat> over the Antlers Cane, I think. I think. Kind of like this setup. It's good. Penny, yep, cut and dry. Penny is Penny. Only one way to build her. Uh, this is a good setup. I always float between energy and like a defensive artifact, but again, that one's completely up to you. Heart Watcher looks good. Aspen, Sherlock, Ticks, that's a good. I, I kind of like energy on Ticks, especially if he's lower enables. It's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, everything else looks pretty solid. You got the Drake for PvE. You do have the second bell rain, which I imagine you're going to make a 10 star and then swap for another light hero, something like that. But no, you don't really have too many projects going on. You are probably trying to chase too many sea lands at the same time. Um, but once you start getting those sea lands done, you can start regressing or replacing heroes like Aspen. Like I would honestly, if you can get the four seas copies, I don't know if you're doing scrolls, if you decided you wanted to go for him or not, but I mean, honestly, swapping the Aspen for four C's copies is not a horrible idea. Uh, as far as the future, Tix is going to be one of the best heroes you can build still on this account right here. But again, if you want Sealand done first in Shadow, if you want to make that a priority, you need to make sure you keep some baby Tix around, get the Horus up to E5. Then you can either regress or replace with more Tix copies or something like that, but yeah, you got to you got to make sure the ticks right here doesn't go any higher. Save your baby ticks and throw it in there. So, um yeah, I think that's good. I think the one other thing we need to look at is going to be your forest ceiling. That's the one you wanted to help with. 18 of 20. 18 of 20 um oh yeah you got the 320 profit orbs too that'll get you a second punisher staff which is going to be really good for this account too next week um uh, but yeah you can grab those inosuke copies and consider swapping out penny with inosuke down the road uh anyway back to forest factions so it's rough that this rogan is only a full e4 if it was an e5 this would be a complete breeze you got the copy I have the food? I only got one molassa here. Yeah, it looks like you need one more molassa copy to make the transition. Uh, we'll give it a try with what we can do, but that molassa is going to be kind of important here. I mean, heck, you might get it just by opening... Oh, you already opened the five-star shards. I was going to say five-star shards, you have a decent chance of getting her. Yeah, getting, getting that molassa up and then feeding the 10 star molassa off to the rogan is going to be huge this death sworn you can't upgrade yeah want to get it in altar eh, i don't know if i want to spend altar coins for molassa that is molassa there actually oh yeah she is three thousand no 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 patience patience we're not gonna spend 3,000 on a molassa. That's not happening. That's half of a lighter dark hero. Is that really worth it? Anybody who ever says guild shop, get out of here. Just leave. Never buy from the guild shop. Ever, 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 ever. Yes, we'll be streaming tomorrow as well, Jesper. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, for content, I don't mind. No, it's fine, man. We'll get it done. If we have to jump back on this account to help you finish it, we will. But for the time being, what we're going to do then is we are going to run a tanky Garuda in the front row. Uh, we'll actually leave that set up just fine there. And really, I think the only difference is we're going to just keep the plate of Courageous on. And let's swap to a 3-1 setup here. I'm going to try to get this done. Now, you don't have a ton of support heroes like oberons and such but this can work out we'll get the oberon in here what do we want to run do we want do we want a basic or active i think i want to active i think i want to active here 
So let's try running something. Uh, I guess we'll just throw. I want another plate of courageous. I'm going to upgrade this. Because it seems like you got tons of artifact food. We're going to take a second and just feed off a lot of these guys into the artifact here. And then let's just start feeding this off. No point trashing too many of those since technically those can be used at better rates, I think, in uh, Ormus Workshop. Let's just max this out. I always, I always forget to do the last one. I'm not going to forget this time. We got it up to six. So, yeah, let's throw on gear like this right here. Got a 2-2 two, two set up. Maybe he can live. Maybe. So, one, two, three, four, five. Um, Honestly, we're going to throw on an energy artifact on this Rogan and just let him die. <laughs> I don't care what he has on him. We're going to give him energy, give out a bloodthirst, more damage. It has a chance. So, let's jump into it. Let's actually check your monsters. We have options, so we can try different things, but I do think Phoenix is still gonna be the best chance for this to win. You're going at the end, then you, then we are going to put the rogue in, you, 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 just like that, with the Phoenix pet, and this might have a chance. So, actually, we're gonna do that. Put the tankier Garuda in the front row to it basically absorbs, or absorb hits, because if you put both your E5s in the back row, what's gonna happen is, the warriors hit the front line or back line, like the whole line. So if you lose your front line heroes, your whole back line is just going to get hit over and over and over. And it's really not optimal. That is a very squishy Garuda right there. We only got one kill. And how did neither of these Garudas actually get bloodthirst? That is ridiculous. We need that. We absolutely need it. All right, that was perfect. We got a double bloodthirst right there. That's what I like to see. Man, he's getting bullied hard. Oh, wait, wasn't I going to run energy on the Rosa? It works out. Sadly, he goes after the Garudas, but still not bad. This one's going a lot better than the last one. Oh, really? We couldn't kill off right here? The back line already lost her shield, so I think we lose. I don't know if they're going to live through this. Although there's no active, so we could get two more actives off. This is looking decent. Yep, that might do it. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Heart Watcher, Heart Watcher with energy. We could do that, but I want our tanky to put multiple layers off. Uh, again, so just to talk about it real quick, PRH, for the future... Um, I don't know if this is actually going to work here. We'll try it. But what optimally is going to happen is you're going to get that Rogan E5 and you're going to put him front row with some uh, damage reduction. You're going to want to make sure the Rogan's faster though. So in round two, he uses his active to potentially put that on both the Garudas built offensively. I'd put the glittery antlers back on one of the Garudas most likely. And, uh, and that'll be much better. But you have to make sure he's faster than the Garudas because you want his round two active to go off before the Garudas use their active. So we'll give this a couple of tries at 20, but this is going to be really, really difficult to work. Um, yeah, you notice the big difference in damage that last attempt too is that the Rogan getting the Bloodthirst buff on both of these Garudas is a huge difference in damage and survivability. Because they're going to like full heal up by using their uh, their actives, essentially. So at the end of the round, in round two, they're pretty close to full energy or for full health. But yeah, that one just lined up really, really poorly for us. But essentially what you need to do is you need to try to snipe off two of the smaller minions in round two. If you can't snipe off two of them, then it kind of doesn't work out that well. Really important. We got that armor reduction, which is good. All right. That one doesn't have the buff, so she doesn't heal like at all. We killed one. I don't think that's enough. I think our backline Garuda just dies here. I mean, it doesn't matter. She's going to die anyway, but let's give it a couple more attempts. We're not going to spend too many on this, but it's pretty close.
The other thing that can actually help out is really difficult though, being only at an E3, is your Heart Watcher can sometimes, if you work with speed on her, like give her a speed artifact, she can get two layers of her buff out before the Garuda's used are active, and that can actually be a huge difference. Although this one has potential, there's we took two enemies out, which is essentially what you have to do. I just don't know if we're going to get to an active on this Garuda. I don't think we are. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. You can run some Energy Olivia's for Fairy Guard. That is actually another good option. I didn't see any Olivia's, though. Olivia, even at 5-star with Energy Artifacts, are really strong. They're really, really great, inexpensive support. Um... There are a couple different things you can do here. Again, it's near impossible to get her faster than the Garudas. But it is one option. What are they? 15, 56, 15, 76. So you're literally like 200, <coughs> 200 speed short. Something that people do end up running is throwing on like an AMB or a Rui Scepter. And then you also run like a speed stone so that Heart Watcher goes first. Because when you look at her active, the one thing that the active does do is it makes it actually stacks just a little bit more damage up. But what it does is it reduces the target's attack by 25%. Whereas the normal basic just uh, tags them with a normal Heart Watcher mark. So it's a difference of 10% on this. Um, so it's 10% damage bonus plus, of course, the attack reduction. The problem is a lot of times I've seen Heart Watcher not actually live long enough. One thing we can try right here, though, is we can actually swap uh, these two around. So we're going to try running energy on, or no, we're going to try. Wait, I thought I had energy. Oh, we don't have enough energy artifacts. That's the problem. Anybody else have energy? Ooh, wait run speed <laughs> give me an energy artifact anybody okay we're gonna grab this for the heart watcher so this is the other way you can technically run the heart watcher is like this um i would split the gear though like this oh man we're gonna have to go way down that's fine we're, we're in it for the hp um you do that We'll just leave the tanky version. So what this does is it gives you a little bit more damage, but a lot of times when you run the same setup with energy, uh, you essentially don't get another round of Heart Watcher buffs. So um, it's kind of a trade-off on your round two damage versus your round three plus damage, which can be a big difference. It can really be. See here, she's she got... She got blood. Wow, everybody important got bloodthirst, but I think the Garudas, yeah, they just split their damage very badly and they didn't hit the Heart Watcher buff. So it's like it can work better with Heart Watcher having energy, but a lot of the times you don't end up hitting the right target anyway, and then you end up with situations like this. Uh, at the end of the day, doesn't really matter which one. I would say probably energy is a little bit better. Uh, but again, so much of this is RNG anyway that it's just, it's such a cluster. Such a cluster. This is definitely doable with what we have, I think. It's just going to take a lot of attempts and a lot of, a lot of chances. You gotta, you have to kill, like, two targets. You gotta not hit the boss, in my opinion, in the round two. You have to kill, like, two to three of the lower, uh, the smaller minions if you hit the boss with the actives, it pretty much says you're not going to win. That's what I've seen. Um, one thing that really is great is if you can kill, if you can have the Heart Watchers hit like... See, I don't like the Heart Watcher buff on you. I just don't. I need to kill the little minions first. Should I go after Inosuke and swap for Penny? I mean, Inosuke would be so easy for you to get C Land 20 done, so it wouldn't be bad, especially since this event is so good. So, And yeah, when you don't get the Rogan buffs on the uh, Garudas, it just means it means you lose. <laughs> you, need, you need Bloodthirst to kind of land on both of those Garudas. That's why even just five-star Rogans with energy, really good. Even at level one, nothing invested into them. Because it can give that bloodthirst out, which is really important. Especially for this front row tank, Garuda 2. Just to heal back up as well. Yeah, see, we're, we just keep hitting the boss over and over. We're splitting the damage. Both Garudas need to hit the same targets. 
That's when you win. Make the tanky Gerudo with HP enables. Every time I've done that, you, we never have enough damage to get it done. Like every time I go HP enables over attack. Every time that I've cleared C lane 20, I've used a tank Gerudo in the front with attack enables with a H with a tanky artifact. And that's usually what works for me. So, but yeah, the bloodthirst worked. I mean, that's close to good, but still you got to kill at least one, probably both of these off. Hitting the boss just did nothing for us. But yeah, I think after this, though, just get the Rogan up to E5. Put the Rogan in, in the front. Two offensive Garudas. You'll have a very, very, very easy time of this. And then, of course, after that, you're going to want to go into Inosuke. Because Inosuke is going to survive into the mid-later game a lot better. Into the end game better. Because he actually has uses where his Penny really doesn't. Um, I would say Inosuke is the better for sure, but I think that is going to be it. If you have any other questions though, let me know. Again, the big thing is make sure if you want Shadow Sea Land done, make sure you build the horse first, then build the ticks up. Make sure you save as many ticks five star copies as you can. Because honestly, if you do uh Death Sworn Horus, the big ticks, you're gonna need three baby ticks, so you still need two more to save up. Hopefully you can find them and then you should have no problem. So let me know what you think. Hopefully, hopefully this helped you out. I'll see you guys next time.